one of the things that I've learned from living in this society through my own life experience is that women can be really resentful if they're not being flirted with or if they're not being given attention. And there's a lot of reasons why uh, women might be angry with men as a whole and why in today's world they may see them in a, a, a general light or stereotype them. And I think that we're seeing more of that in today's age, day and age, than perhaps 10, 20, 30, and so on and so forth. I don't believe it's always been just like this. And for those of you that are much older than I, perhaps you can testify to that. So I sense a lot of resentment when I'm out there in society. Uh, when I'm not giving women a certain sense of attention or checking them out. Or responding to perhaps their attempt to make eye contact. And the very fact of the matter is... A lot of them have been so heavily programmed by the society that they're only operating on the physical level. And I've been a public person for about a decade now. So people have always had the ability to contact me on the local level. And there are certain people that have, but it's also not good to get too close to certain people that have certain types of uh, vampiric tendencies to them. And I've seen that time and time again with certain people that I've known firsthand and I've noticed patterns. So there's certain types of people, unfortunately, that at times have been attracted to me and it's caused problems. Uh, I, I would even almost call it a trap. And I don't really want to speak in a detailed way about this, but um, certain people that have, uh, that have reached out in the past have had this kind of thing about them that um, was more energy sucking than anything else. And so sometimes we learn, be very careful what you wish for when you're lonely and uh, you open up the door for company. And so for the most part, I've been single for an extended amount of time. And since coming back to Portland, I haven't been in the dating scene. I haven't been getting on Craigslist. And there, there's times in the past where I have met interesting people. Uh, but only within a few years, the 2009-2010 period. I've mentioned this before, but it, it really hasn't been a part of my life since that period. And so for a good number of years now, I've spent a lot of time alone. A lot of time alone. And being that I'm a public person, the way that I've always figured it is let people come to you. But I also as I just said, have realized that it's also a way that you can entrap yourself or end up in a bad situation uh, where someone that wants to suck your energy can walk through the door. And so in many cases, it's better for someone like me to be absolutely single and to not get involved in drama and avoid drama at all costs. And I would say that I'm lucky that certain uh, dramas in this world that other men have had to experience, I haven't had to go through what they've had to go through. And I'm on a mission. And I'm living a pretty unique life. And it's not for a lot of women to be around. It's definitely for one in a million or maybe one in a billion. Or maybe even beyond that. But uh, I've come to terms with that. And I'm more at peace with that than ever uh, at this moment. And, you know, I'm not going to tell my life story now. But let's just say through our life experiences, we learn a lot. We learn a lot about ourselves, about humanity. And uh, maybe that truth is for only us to understand and know. And maybe not for the rest of the world that may have yet to come to their own point of realizing a certain truth about the human condition. But yeah, I have noticed a sense of resentment from women in society when I'm not flirting with them. And what I do is I just shield from it, from that negativity. And I don't, I try not to engage you know, and I'm going to be talking more about certain subjects about not succumbing to the spirit of retaliation or responding with anger in certain circumstances that we may find ourselves in in today's society where there's a lot of pissed off people running around like chickens with their head cut off with no direction, no grounding. So do we want to just be responding like a ping pong ball to all the things that are going on around us or do we want to be grounded and walk over the fire through the storm? through the zombie apocalypse with a sense of zen and peace. It's better to be alone than lay down and wake up with fleas. Maybe not of a, a literal physical sense, but issues, dramas. 
And in today's day and age, for people like me, it's um, it's draining, painful, because there's a lot of rejection involved to even try to get close to mainstream people or women in today's society. It's incredibly painful because once someone like me, and I don't really want to talk deeply about this, but some people just don't understand. Once I start sharing about who I am and things I care about, I watch people just shit all over it and actually put it down. And uh, I'm not going to elaborate, but that's, uh, that's hitting the nail right on the head. And that's painful. And that's uh, desecrating, in my opinion, the sacred masculine that wants to do the right thing, that wants to protect society, that wants to stand with the truth. When I watch uh, the feminine desecrate that, and my life experience has been marked by meeting a lot of those types of women. And most, most all of them that way. And I'll say, you know, I've talked about how some married women use single men. In a previous video, I just got to say, there are a lot of wonderful, very friendly married women out there that I've had interactions with. And I think that there's no question why they're married. I don't think I said that in the last video. There's no question why they're married. And maybe someone, some women, they, they almost seem to be friendlier when they're married, almost like because they have that sense of security there. So it's like, a, ah, and they got someone in their corner. It's like that. So I think a lot of women out there that have declared that they love being single, I think there's a lot of lonely people out there that actually love to meet someone that they can actually trust, that would actually love them and not hurt them. So I, I see, I see there's, there's a problem out there in society with a lot of resentment. A lot of us aren't, aren't trusting each other. We're afraid of each other. That's the issue. And so, yes, I might recognize that person checking me out. And I might, you know, a split second recognize that they're good looking. But, you know, at this point, because I'm a public person, I can't be getting involved with people on the street and just, you know, that type of a thing. It's, um, it's something that I, I'm always negotiating with the universe as far as, you know, bringing certain opportunities to my doorstep but at the same time bad situations can come about as well so there's a lot of women out there that don't understand why some men aren't flirting with them and their self esteem may be attached to um, men checking them out their hairstyle they may not know to, to take my own situation out of the equation they may not know how some men may have been adversely impacted by the programming out there to not even approach women or to uh, um, avoid react uh, rejection by sticking to themselves. And I don't think that women today are really aware of the pain that men have been going through, especially with the self-image thing, especially with the, the reality of the economy, with a lot of men that have been uh, losing their homes or losing their jobs or losing their families. Uh, in a world where a lot of um, men are valued by how much money they have. And so there, there are things like this that are happening within society that women may not think about. So they may want that attention, but, you know, if men feel like uh, their attention isn't wanted or that it's not a, it's a, or that it's a waste of time to even start an interaction because if they don't have any money, they don't have any value. If women are reinforcing that bullshit and staying in that paradigm of materialism, then it's not helping them in the end when it comes to men not being assertive enough because women like men to be assertive, you know, look them in the eye and, and kind of be, you know, on the on the moving forward momentum, like, rawr, you know, move forward with it, seal the deal. Not necessarily play a game, but show some genuine interest. Well, do women know that when those videos, you know, are put out there, a so-called viral video of the woman in New York where it, it basically looks like, all these black men are harassing this lady or it's spun to look that way. And people ask, well, where are the white guys? Uh, and there, there was a mix of both white and black that said hello in this alleged video, of this woman on the street. It's basically making it look like there are all these borderline sexual predators in New York. And men don't like to be labeled that way or assume that they're that way, whether it because, be because of what they look like or their race or what city they're in. So, you know, the, the video almost seemed to have a propaganda aspect to it to kind of convince men to or put that message out there that 
flirtatious behavior is just not okay in today's society. And so people that don't want to be the nail that, that, that stands out and gets hit, you know, they are policing themselves. And people are being very careful in this day and age. Oh, especially with all these, uh, so, you know, they talk about this rape epidemic, but there's also the epidemic of fake rape allegations. And there's so many things going on to men and women out there. Um, but to speak to men and the fake, fake rape allegations, I'm really lucky that I haven't had to deal with some of the insanity out there because I haven't come across some of these really crazy people. But I'm not, I'm not out at today's bars. I'm not playing the game to get inside people's pants. And people got to realize that when you're dealing with people like that out there where there's intoxicants and people feel like they have to get fucked up to feel like it's okay to have sex, then weird shit might happen. There might be some dramas there. A whole lot of dramas. I think in an ideal society, it would be easier for people to hook up and, and be in relationships and be able to trust each other and love each other. And not necessarily be labeled casual sex, but have a meaningful relationship, but it not necessarily be about control. You know, th there has to be balance on both the part of the male and the female to have a healthy relationship to where one is not dominating the other. I think these are very important conversations to have. Very much so. And in today's day and age, there's a lot of uh, people out there that have had their hearts broken that have been hurt by their parents and that plays a huge part it plays a huge part there are so many sons and daughters that have been so fucked up by their mothers and their fathers and it's actually a, a, a cycle not necessarily of abuse but of um, <sighs> unconscious human relations that seems to get passed down in this chain where there's a lot of uh, repeating behaviors uh, sometimes in genetic bloodlines, you'll notice uh, either the, the women or the men in some cases seem to be a little batshit or emotional or over the top. There's, there are genetic dispositions to being um, off the handle when it comes to being a little bipolar, as they call it today, or just emotional, which I think is totally human for people to be bouncing around like a ping pong ball when they're not grounded. I don't think that's a mental illness. I think that's our natural state. When we're not in a state of health, the mind, body, and spirit, which is why that's really, really important. So, you know, it, it, in today's day and age with, with um, our fast-paced world, it's difficult for me to meet women and, and express who is Alex Ansari. Um, why do I do what I do? Why don't I make a lot of money at it? It's the first thing people, women ask. Um, how much money do you make doing it? At least, you know, when I met people before, they would ask that. Like one of the first questions. Um, so I'm not on the path that a lot of men are on with making money and, and getting ready to have a home and a child. I'm now almost 35 and I don't really believe I'm going to have children at this point or that it's really important for me to, to even find a special maid. In fact, I think that those thoughts are almost toxic and are working against me. And I think I need to liberate myself completely from what anyone thinks about me or my message, especially the female viewers. I want to help liberate people for the greater good of all and to evolve my own soul. And there's a lot of things that need to be discussed that are not being discussed when it comes to relationships today. So I know what it's like now to survive being ostracized on a social level, to be left for dead, and basically to be down at a point where you're doing your broadcast out of a trailer, literally off the side of a road, and still getting the message out there. So um, what I think I want to do to provide inspiration for a lot of the uh, the male viewers out there that are going their own way is is encourage us to take a more conscious, spiritual, uh, um, to embark upon that path and not become resentful, but actually liberate ourselves, do whatever work is necessary to liberate ourselves from the desire to even want to be involved with some of these toxic women out there and to not feel bad if we're making them angry or if they're ticked off. We've got to learn how to protect ourselves spiritually from that psychic attack that comes from the scorn of today's woman. It, it hurts. It hurts when it gets close. And that's why sometimes we have to protect our hearts and be very careful what and who we get close to and what we give our attention to. Thank you for watching.